Welcome to today's lesson in portraiture. That's what it's called. And today we're going to be looking at eyes with the help of my assistant, Manny. Manny is a Plains of Head mannequin and he is brilliant because he has all the planes, which are all these angular surfaces. And there's a lot of information there that we don't see on a normal head like mine. So my forehead looks quite flat, but in fact it is slowly moving backwards. And that's what you can really see by the angularness of many. So today we're going to be looking at eyes. So let's get started. Okay, so there's Manny and we're going to have a very close look at those eyes and what happens in the um, eye area. To truly understand what's going on with the eyes, we need to look at the skeleton. We need to look underneath the flesh and the muscle. I have superimposed a drawing of the skeleton on top of Manny, and then we're having a closer look at those eye sockets. Now you can see how the whole of the eye socket encompasses from the brow bone to underneath the actual eyeball. Now I popped an eyeball in there, and so you can see how that fits within the eye socket itself. I've now drawn an iris and a pupil on my eyeball so you can see how that looks. If you get yourself some tracing paper, you can draw a skull and do this on top of um, a drawing as well of a face. If you look at the right hand side, you'll see how the flesh wraps around the eyeball. So I popped another eyeball in there. So you can have a, a better look how that works. And you can see that the tear duct actually comes out to the right of where that flesh is wrapping around. So of course the tear duct is not part of the eyeball itself, but on the side of it. Uh, but the bags that you get under your eyes and the eyelids, that's all part of your eyeball. Because we focus on eyes the most when we're looking at somebody, especially when we're talking to them, we see the eyes as being really, really large. But what actually makes them large is that part that is the eyelid and underneath the um, eye, those little bit of baggage there. <laughs> um, but some people don't notice the eyelid and the little bag underneath and they make these giant eyes that look like that. That's not correct. They are actually much smaller. You have to remember that you have that big round ball there that the flesh is wrapping around. And if you look at the actual whites of the eyes, they're quite small. The space of the eyelid and the uh, lower part of the eye, the bag there, take up more space than the white part. Um, depending on your age, the older you are, of course, the, the more the skin of your eyebrow area is going to be moving into the eyelid and making that smaller. So it'll appear that as you age, your eyes are smaller. Now remember as well that you do have that little bit of eyelash line. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the mistakes people make when they're drawing lashes. Have a look at these lashes. They're all curling to one direction and they're beginning at the actual eyeball instead of in the little shelf that is the lash line. That's where they should begin. Now having a look at the diagram on the right, the top eye and the bottom eye, the lashes are all going in one direction or in the other direction when really they should be going in both directions just like they appear in the middle diagram and on Manny's face. Um, the bottom lashes look good, the top ones look pretty good, but they need to be attached to that uh, lash line, the inside shelf of the um, lash line at the top there. If you look at the top lashes now, that's kind of how I do them when I'm doing a painting or a drawing. I keep them quite thick at the bottom and taper them and make them a little bit thinner. Um, and I also have a shadow underneath my lash line caused by the lashes. Um, if you go and have a look in the mirror, you'll see that you will have a shadow because of your lashes. Another thing to note is that the iris, which is round, will be a little bit trimmed 
by the eyelids themselves and the um, lash line. So instead of having a big circle, unless you're really surprised looking, um, it's going to be trimmed or cropped at the top and sometimes at the bottom. Just go have a look in the mirror. You'll know what I'm talking about. If you've been following these lessons in order, you'll remember the charcoal drawing of Lady Gaga and how I talked about putting a position of where the eyes are and not just doing the outline like you see here. Instead, when I, I put a position in, I find that whole eye socket area and then I look for those negative shapes. So the negative shapes are the ones in blue that you see. They're not the actual eye, but the shapes around the eye. That is really going to help you so much if you can try to observe those areas. You can start with a line drawing like you can see here that I did on top of Manny. And then after that, have a look at those negative shapes, which you can see with the pink and the blue. Um, that's where you're going to get very important information. Now, can you see where the eye on the right meets the nose? The tear duct is now hidden behind that nose. Pay attention to the right eye. See how the corners disappear as Manny's head turns. There are no harsh, sharp lines anymore in a three-quarter view of that eye. Now we're going to look at another three-quarter view of a different face and discuss some of the mistakes that people make when they're doing three-quarter views. In this case, the nose, the mouth, and the eye on the right are too far to the right and the space between the eyes is too great. Another common mistake is to have the eyes in the correct position but not have the nose and the mouth in the correct position. So they need to be moved over to the left and they are very close to the side of the face now. This three-quarter drawing is now in proportion. Let's have another look at Manny. Starting at the left-hand side, let's look at the proportions. Uh, between his left eye and his temple, that area is quite large in a three-quarter view. You see bits of the side of the head, and then the eye is large there. And between the eye and uh, the bridge of his nose, that's a, a medium space. Uh, the bridge is a little bit smaller. And then there's no space between the right eye and the nose itself. I'm now all set up in the studio to do a drawing of Manny's eye, and I'm going to use oil pastels. So I have some Senelier pastels, and I also have some Neo pastels. Um, I'm going to choose maybe five colors, a light one, a medium colored one, and a dark one. It doesn't really matter if it's going to, I mean, Manny's gray, so I can give him any flesh tones, but I do want to have some darks and lights. If you want to do this exercise and buy some oil pastels, Sunnelier are very rich and creamy, but sometimes can get a little bit gluggy. For that reason, perhaps you would like to start with some Neo pastels. Other tools I use when I'm doing oil pastels are these rubber brushes to blend, which I do very, very infrequently. Um, I don't like to over blend. I like to layer my colors together. Uh, to blend opposed to use smudging tools and things like that. Because oil pastels are oil based, you can use different oil painting mediums with them. So today I'm going to use a citrus turpentine that will just thin out my oil pastels for a good base. Start with the large shapes first and draw the entire eye sockets using a medium value or medium color and then get your turps and pick up paint right on top of that and pick up the oil pastel. Continue to look at the largest areas first and using your darkest crayon, that one there is my darkest, I'm not going with anything black yet. Um, and then look for something that's a little bit lighter in the areas around the eye. Again, that color is not really super light. I want to save the super light and the super dark for later. I'm just building all of those negative shapes around the eye socket opposed to doing the eyeball area and the iris and the pupil right now. That comes later. Just keep building and observing. Keep on adding more layers on top of each other. You can see that I'm layering all the, the different uh, the three crayons. I think I have four here going. 
Um, I've added some lighter things, but there's no white and there's no black yet. I'm now adding some green for irises and using some white, but only to the bottom halves of the eyeball there. Do not go too white or it's just going to look way too strong. Um, I've got some yellow there and I'm just doing a little U shape. And that's just so it shows how the light um, goes into the eye there, down at the bottom. Because there is a shadow from the eyelashes, if you can remember. And now I'm starting to put some black in, but I'm putting that black in very, very softly. I'm not putting anything on really, really thick or really, really hard. It's just a very, very feathery touch that I'm using. Those eyebrows, they are right where the two planes meet the dark plane and the light plane. I'm nearly finished. Um, I have a few little uh, finishing touches that I would like to do. Um, some tips are if you need to get some detail in some lighter areas like in that little eyeball there, um, I would like that to be a little bit whiter but every time I put the white down it just keeps mixing so I want to take that oil pastel off. So you have just scraped it off I can wipe it away and then I can apply my white on top of that now. The white sometimes you have to um, clean off your pastels as well. See how it's a bit dirty? I need to get rid of that dirt and the best way is just to wipe it on my cardboard uh, or with a Kleenex and it's nice and clean now. You can see how I layer my different values together or my different colors together. I don't use a smudgy stick. I just layer one color on top of the other and that does all the blending that I need. Because I have a matte board, I got this from the framers. It was just an off cut um, and it's white. I can see if I can scratch back to get the white of the paper. If I would have gessoed that board first and let it dry, it would have worked um, even better. Um, it's not as white as I want. Um, but um, it's pretty good. So now what I got is my little rubber tool and I've picked up some of the thick Senelier oil pastel on the end there and I'm using it kind of like a paintbrush. You could use a paintbrush as well um, because there is no uh, pointy detail bits on that uh, oil stick, <laughs> that oil crayon. So I have to use something. So you can see how I've got it layered up there and I'm just putting it in, it's dirty. Um, just putting it in the area that I scratched away. So I scratched it away again because there was color under there and it'll just get all blended with the color underneath. So now I've got some nice blobby highlights in there and some little bits of highlight. You can see them there on many. That's the little bits of white that I'm putting in at the very end. You can see I used the white at the very end and the black at the very end. And there's just a little bit of highlight there on Manny. And I think it needs a little bit of tear duct in there. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, it was a bit challenging because Manny is gray and because he doesn't have all his information on his left side. So I had to base it on everything that was on the right side and base it on the what I know about the anatomy and what I know about the way the flesh wraps around those uh, orbs of the eyes. Here are some of the colors I've used. You can see my light color, my medium color, and then a dark color, and I can mix two together to get an, another tone. Um, I have like sort of an earthy brown color and then a dull brown color and when I wanted something super dark I just put this green on top of that sort of ready brown color instead of using black because I sometimes want it to go dark but it's a mistake to put the black in till the very end so those are the two colors I put together that green and that brown I can't help myself I just have to put a little tiny bit of light there and a little bit light there because that's what you know, if I look at Manny and the lights and darks over there, that's what he looks like. That's the first of two drawings finished. Um, the second one is going to be a three-quarter view because that was a straight on. That's the easier eye to be drawing. So now I'm going to do a three-quarter view. I'm not going to use terps in the beginning, but I am going to do exactly the same way as starting with the large shapes and 
working the negative shapes around everything. So I'm going to get started. I'm just finishing up here and I've noticed that on the left hand side of that eye there is something that is not quite right and maybe you can spot it but I'm not going to fix it because it's a demonstration and I think um, you get the idea of how to um, to work the oil pastels they're really great for doing portraits because you can't fill too much and make everything tight they do stay very loose as you can see here um, here's a picture of Manny and here's a picture of this um, random gorgeous girl um, for you to do your own version. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about how to draw eyes today. And uh, next lesson will be a newsies. Bye. Thank you.